I wonder what it feels like the first time a child is sitting in class and suddenly discovers that he or she can't do what everybody around them is doing. I had a terrible time reading. My teacher's school couldn't understand it. Uh, they thought I was a bright student, but I simply could not read. I always felt a little bit different going through school. I remember even at an early age having anxiety. I was never the one who would volunteer to read out loud or give a speech or go to a speech class. You measure yourself against other children. And when you can't read nearly as well as your classmates, it is something that is very disturbing. I knew as a kid there were a lot of things that were different just about how my mind seemed to work. But you know, when you're seven or eight, you just think you're weird. I wanted to talk to the principal and I asked him, am I dumb? Is this not the right place for me? I discovered my youngest son and I shared the same problem. And he was then in second grade and I was about 40. I was 34 years old. Uh, and I was dating a teacher, and I was trying to read the paper, and I was having great difficulty reading because I don't read well. And she finally said, you're dyslexic. Dyslexia is what's called a hidden disability, so you don't see any signs. The children seem to be and are bright in every other way. So what happens is on the page, there's so many words, and then there, it's black and white, so everything's just swirling around and I can hardly keep track. I see a bunch of foreign code, and so I have to go through each word to decode it and turn it into sound in your mind. And then, of course, that gives meaning. The definition of dyslexia is an unexpected difficulty in reading in comparison to their intelligence, level of education, or their professional status. Dyslexia is difficulty with learning to read and the inability to read quickly. Difficulties in spelling. Difficulty with handwriting. But the basic core problems involve reading and getting to the sounds of words. When children are young, they associate reading with intelligence. And reading is simply one way that we accumulate information. It is not anything to do with how we process that information. How we process that information is far more important. The kind of person we are, the kind of contribution we'll make, the kind of utility we have for society. When I saw Skye and how depressed she was and how she thought she was dumb and she didn't believe in herself, I just thought I was losing her. You know, the discovery of dyslexia for a student and for their family is a journey. It begins usually with a caring teacher who says something like, I think I see a problem, and directs the parent to, to assessment. The truth is, parents can catch a lot of things, but it, you really don't know it until you're in school because the, the teacher can watch you progress on a daily basis. And if someone you discover may be dyslexic, you go, oh, okay, you and I, we got a journey. What we now know is you can be quite intelligent and still read very slowly. And in fact, is if you look at the top tier of any profession, writers, people in cinema, physicians, Nobel laureates, attorneys, people in business and finance, there's a disproportionately high number of people who are dyslexic. People who are dyslexic are not going to be your sequential, very literal thinkers. They're going to be the out-of-the-box thinkers. It was only four years ago that I was diagnosed with having childhood and adult dyslexia. When I found this out, I was shocked. But when it was really proven to me that I actually had suffered from this my entire life, I was so relieved because all those years of terror, standing up and reciting and going to the blackboard and spelling things, it was incredible the amount of relief I felt. And then I got angry. You know, why did I have to spend so many years not knowing about myself? Why couldn't somebody have brought my parents and I into the fold of knowledge uh, uh, back when they could have done something about it? One of the things that is unfortunate with children in public schools is that because you have one teacher trying to organize a classroom with 35 students, you might even realize that that student is probably dyslexic. That student might also be dyslexic. But you simply, in the course of your day, 
are not able to give them the accommodations that they need. And I think there's nothing more heartbreaking than that. The biggest normal accommodation for a dyslexic is time. And given extra time, they can produce so much more. But this is one of the, the biggest things that we fight at the moment, is trying to increase the understanding by people that the extra time is not an extra advantage. It's just necessary. You need schools like Westmark, private independent schools, that not only understand what dyslexic students need, but are able to give it to them. One of the big pluses that I always say whenever somebody asks me about Westmark is they have small classes so that the teacher really helps you in class on the specific thing you need help on. We had one little boy, he walked up to me after two weeks at the school with a big smile on his face and said, Westmark has the oil. And I said, Alex, what do you mean Westmark has the oil? And he said, well, inside my head I have all these gears. And at my other school they were rusted and stuck. And he said, Westmark has provided the oil and everything's working. And he went away with a big smile, well, as did I. Obviously the more students are able to be diagnosed and the more easy it becomes to diagnose students, the more need there will be for those students to be helped in a special way like the way Westmark does. So hopefully more schools like our school will pop up. Um, it can't be too soon in my opinion.